Get up. They're hoisted to the concrete columns by a tower crane. The crew, however, gets there the old-fashioned way. Okay, let's head up. Be careful. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Seriously, guys? Oh, the ladder rung broke. Okay, then it's fine. It's not like I'm climbing up to somewhere dangerous on the edge of a building. I'd be mean, really dangerous. <laughs> Come on, ladder. 20 feet up, Come on, ladder. at the very top of the column, a dense mesh of rebar has got to be removed to make room for the anchor. Okay, so, uh, that ridiculous process was in order to cut the tops of the rebar off so we can guarantee ourselves a perfectly flat surface in which to put down the anchorage. Okay, do you yes. have a good surface now? Yes, yes, it's ready. 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 ready, ready, let's go. And right there, coming in, there she is, there's the embedment, come to Papa. There's something incredibly medieval about this. Each anchor is outfitted with 20 steel spikes. Okay, we got it. That'll be tied to the rebar cage inside of the column, locking the anchor in place. Coming up and over. Where's she going? We're losing her. We're losing her. Okay. Okay, she's coming down. Coming down. Look at this. This is it. We're basically inserting a needle. And this makes all the sense in the world. Once this anchorage comes down, what do you see? A massive steel top. This is what the entire flick, the whole neck steel structure, gets anchored to. Okay. Oh, yep, 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 yep. And down. Each anchor has to be perfectly level before it can become a permanent part of the tower. What's the problem? Stuck? Yes. Cutting here. More cutting. Right now, a five inch piece of rebar stands in the way. In there, here we go, here we go. What do you think? Finish it. Done. Done. No. Level. Level. Happy. I'm so happy now. Well, the steel piece is finally in place, and we have done it, as only three musketeers and D'Artagnan only could. And as they say, <laughs> one for all. <laughs> all for one. And all for one. We did it. Steel's in place. <laughs> Coming up, there she is. Building one of the most advanced concert halls in the world. So leaving the basket. In a space with some of the world's most challenging acoustics. Tied to something. So assuming if the panel does, I'll go with it. Baku is the cultural epicenter of Azerbaijan, and music is one of its biggest attractions. The city has more concert halls per square mile than London. Now, the new cultural center is adding a state-of-the-art 1,200-seat venue, one of the biggest in the city, and the first in the world to be built just 200 feet from a library. So we are standing in the auditorium. Yes. Now, tell me a bit about the idea of a concert hall inside of a building that has a library, because there is something funny about someone very quietly reading a book while next door there's a very heavy set woman singing opera. Definitely. And the two never know what's going on. Definitely. So we have to get rid of the sound noise. We call it sound isolation, noise control. Uh, in auditorium, we need to cut the sound. So they use very thick concrete uh, walls so that no sound will pass through the auditorium. So the concert hall, is actually a building inside of another building. Definitely, we call it box and box construction. The concert hall is a contained box, separated from the library by six soundproof walls, made from 25 inch thick concrete and a 130,000 square foot layer of rock wool insulation. Inside the box, architects wanted the floor, walls, and ceiling wrapped by more than 280 interlocking oak panels. The only concert hall in the world to be clad entirely in wood. Hello, Hi, Malik. How are you? How are you? Fine. How are you? Nice to meet you. Good. Welcome. So, Malik, now I've been to many performance halls. I've seen orchestras. I've seen operas. I've seen speeches. I've never seen a mm. performance hall that looks like this one. Yeah, that's right. It's like a sculpture. It, it? Yeah. It is like a sculpture. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it is incredible. God, look at this wood. This is like the lines of a sports car. Yeah. These like incredibly smooth curves. I mean, it looks almost like liquid, like the waves peel up <laughs> and fold up like that. Yeah, it's, it's very amazing. Of course, it's a very hard technique because you're uh, manufacturing it piece by piece. So the trick is that when you assemble these very large individual pieces, yeah. it feels as if the whole auditorium itself was carved from a solid block you of wood. Right. 
While an all-wood interior creates a sculptural look, it limits sound engineers with a single acoustic environment. A challenge since this is a multifunctional venue designed for live orchestras, opera, and speeches. And each of those different kinds of performance mm -hmm. have different acoustical needs. Yes. For speech, you need a, a little bit dead space. Uh, you don't want too much excessive reverberation because the speech intelligibility is very important. Right. But the music means longer reverberation time. You want a live space for a music. A live space. Yes. Because you want to have that full, rich sound all throughout the performance hall. Right. So the question is, how then do you accomplish both seemingly opposing goals in one single space? Yes. Our solution is a concept called coupled spaces. Coupled spaces. Right. The bigger the space, the more sound reverberates, creating echoes ideal for music, but problematic for speeches. So by designing a coupled space hidden above the ceiling, 15 feet of additional room is used to modulate the reverb. For concerts, retractable wood panels swing open, creating a live room with one second of extra reverb. For speeches, they close, cutting reverb in half, deadening the room. Today, crews are hanging the second retractable panel, over 1,500 pounds suspended from the ceiling. Let's go to the heavens. Unable to fit a crane inside, they hoist the panel 50 feet using a cable system. Hello, boys! To a team of four workers inside the coupled space. Oh, boy. So leaving the basket, going to the ceiling. Let's see how we're doing this. Each eight-foot-wide panel is hollowed out in the back. Come up over here. Providing a precariously narrow workspace. Yes, we'll tie to something. So assuming if the panel goes, I'll go with it. And since the panels are suspended from a cable system, they sway with every step. Oh boy, that's great. Okay, so, you know, from where I'm standing, you can really understand how this coupled space concept works. Below me is the main auditorium, the concert hall. And above me is this secondary coupled space. And in order to connect them to change the volume, you operate a movable flap. Like this, guys, shall we? Flap pulls back, exposes one space to the next, and radically changes the sound of the concert hall. Up and over. Yep. All right. Workers attach each panel to 20-foot-long tension cables, one every two and a half feet. Lock that puppy up. Keeping this massive 20-foot panel suspended and level, fitting flush to the adjacent piece. So, as this tightens right here, the cord gets tense, which means the weight of this wood panel is now being suspended from the ceiling. It takes 24 tension cables to support just a single panel. The final 281 panels will require over 15 miles of the stuff. So as you see right there, the straps are coming off, which means the piece is hanging and is affixed to the permanent ceiling. And as you look around and see this tension cable, all these buckles, all this hidden structure, it gives you a sense of just how much goes on behind the scenes in order to create this amazing architectural form that you actually do get to see. Coming up, we're going to install the very top of the flick. Yes. Making fire out of steel. Good luck, my friend. Means climbing to the very top of the city. The legit Turkish Spider-Man right there. That is sick. Last year, the city of Baku unveiled the tallest flagpole ever built, flying the world's largest flag. But now, this symbol of independence is about to be surpassed by an even taller icon, the Flame Towers, topped by an over 500-ton steel crown that emulates a flickering flame. The flick of the flame is created by assembling massive individual steel sections. And today, we're going to put the highest piece of steel on the very top of the flick with this piece right here. Construction of the flick of the flame is at a historic milestone, as the first of three crowns nears completion. Once the steel framework is clad in over 400 glass panels, this 100-foot high vaulted space will become a landmark restaurant for Baku. So Tamar, the 24 feet of steel that we have in front of us, that relates to this piece right there. Yes, absolutely. We're gonna install this entire piece, and after that point, all you have left to do is put that half piece right here the very top of the flick. Yes, correct. You're almost done. Almost done. All right, so what we're gonna do 
It's actually pretty phenomenal. With the straps now in place, we're going to attach a camera to the top of the column. So as the crane picks it up, we're going to give you a view looking straight down as it travels almost 700 feet above Baku. All right, let's get this puppy cooked up here. With the camera securely attached, settings look right. The tower crane lifts the five-ton steel column off the ground. There it goes. The camera is rolling. The column's going up, so now we are going to go beat it to the top. Let's get up there, baby. Here we go. Up at the top, over 500 curving pieces of steel are supported by a latticework of scaffolding. Oh, man, that is high up. To reach the tip of the flame, Here we go. crews have to climb through it, up 65 feet of ladders. There's not a single human higher than me in Azerbaijan at the moment, except for those dudes up there. Hello, fellas. Hello. At over 680 feet, Okay. Five iron workers install the steel column. My name is Danny, how are you? Fine. Crowding together on a narrow wooden platform just five feet wide. All right, that right there is the piece we're continuing. That's the outside column at the edge of the flick. And we're gonna extend this column now over 20 feet up to almost the very top of this building. Here she comes, look at our camera. <laughs> Still there. The tower crane hoists the 24 foot steel column just a few feet away from the side of the building. That is amazing, amazing, isn't it? Traveling this close to the building keeps it out of the strong Baku wind, but poses a threat to the curving glass facade. All right, this is where things are getting tense. We've gotten the column up at the right height, now we gotta get into the position, and this involves guys pulling steel over our bodies. That is sick. Perched 120 feet up, the towel crane lacks the precision needed to line up the bolts. Let's get a bolt here. No, other side. Requiring crews to position the five-ton piece by hand. It's coming down a little bit. So I'm gonna use this piece to thread both holes and get us lined up. That's a happy place right there. There's a much Okay, lock it. Hold up. All right, with these four bolts now lined up and affixed, that means the previous column is now perfectly lined up with this column. So the next and final step is to weld it together. Lock it up, baby. Lock it up. So I have an important question. Yeah. Who's going to get my camera down? Camera? Oh, OK. <laughs> Mohamed. Yes. Mohamed will go. Wow. Good luck, my friend. Oh, you're a brave man. Oh, Mohamed, oh, I, I I'm sorry. <laughs> Still filming at almost 700 feet. The legit Turkish Spider-Man right there. Muhammad has to climb on the very edge of the tower with only two inch wide scaffolding for support. Oh, he's got it. He's got hands on it. Muhammad! <laughs> okay. Uh, amazing. This camera just had a ridiculous ride going up 675 feet alongside one of the most amazing new towers in Baku. Got trapped. Muhammad made the valiant and bold rescue you're a real rock star. Okay. Thank you. When finished, the flame towers will stand not only as a statement of national pride, but also as a symbol for a new identity. Joining the Haydar Ali of Cultural Center as the first steps in a $6 billion a year transformation. So tell me 10 years from now when I come back to visit Baku, what is your hope that these new buildings have done to transform this place? But the whole purpose was empowering the individual, lifting them up. So being inside those curvatures, suddenly somebody struck and say, I can be these buildings. Wow, this is me. So the idea isn't just building monuments to Azeri history or the Azeri past, but it's the idea of a place that can actually create a different Azeri future. Exactly. If you create this space where creativity is nurtured, a society where there is creativity, you have a future. After centuries of living under the influence of other people's ideas, cultures, and governments, the people of Azerbaijan finally have the space to choose. Who do they want to be as a people? What kind of city do they want to live in? And maybe most importantly, what kind of culture do they want to create for themselves? And to figure that out, they're making buildings. And they're doing it with curves that no one has ever seen before. And I think what's most exciting is that these projects don't represent an answer of what Azeri culture is but rather the beginning of a question of what this new culture could be. <laughs>